the cloud. Okay, so this meeting, as you heard, is being recorded. This is the Board of Health meeting of December 1st, 2021. We're meeting by Zoom and um, the meeting is, it, the recording will be available to anyone who asks for it from the town clerk. So the first order of business, as always, the minutes of the previous meeting, we worked them over pretty well on the mm -hmm. before. So everybody satisfied with them as they are now? Move to approve. Second. Second. Yep. Okay. I approve. Okay. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Um, I haven't had any word from Greg, Steve, about 56 Wendell Road. The same thing happened last month. I asked him to report for November 1st and like the day after, after our meeting, he, he checked in. So I'm hoping that that will happen. This time too, I haven't seen any any activity. Last I knew, um, he was waiting for the hazardous materials test results. And he was also, I guess he was sort of doing battle with the insurance companies. So we'll have to see. It's getting, this is getting old. Definitely. Um, yeah. So the, um, quickly, oh, the open space and recreation plan did, did you guys look at that? I mean, we had like two lines. It was nothing. Um, you didn't look at it. Did I, you? I scanned <laughs> it, but I, but I was really unclear about what we were meant to be addressing. And yeah, I was too. I had to ask Penny and she said, basically just, um, they want to make sure we know what we've signed on for before they go public with this plan on December 16th when they're having a, a public forum on it. And they don't want any of the boards and committees to be taken by surprise but by the commitments the, that they've made. What is the relation, what commitments are we making and what is the relationship to the BOH and this plan, I guess is, um, that also was well, not clear to me. Okay, let me, let me look at the plan. I forgot to get it ready. Um, So the, it's like we're an advisory committee. So was this plan oh. forwarded along to, to us or is it only in BOH email? I thought I forwarded it along but it's possible that I failed to do that. I can't remember where I, I know I read it, but I think uh -huh. I read it in BOH email and I'm trying to locate it. Okay, well, I have it and I'll, I'll read you, I'm, I'm downloading it right now and I will read you the, um, oh, the I things. Think it's a November 23rd email, is that right? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, it looks, I, I haven't seen the plan. The only thing I have is from the open space committee. Okay. Um, well, yeah. You don't have the thing that said says seven year action plan. Uh, no. So there was a separate email that was sent out if you signed up for the notification oh, from I the see. various committees. Uh, so I, I received a, a notification from the open space committee about the plan. I see. And, and a okay. forum, but not the plan. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought that I had sent it out, um, but here's the here's the board of health part of it. Basically, it gives it gives the object objectives and the sub goals under that, and the action and who's responsible for it. So, goal A is protect Shutesbury's natural resources. All right. okay. A3, the goal is protect the availability and quality of drinking water resources. And the Board of Health's commitment for this is as follows. Continue to educate owners of private septic systems about the importance of having systems pumped out and keeping them in good working condition in order to, to prevent risks to public health and the environment from systems that become overwhelmed during periods of heavy precipitation. Continue to educate homeowners about the risk of well contamination, keeping them informed of water testing programs. 
Okay, right. I, I'm sorry that I had forgotten about that, but that seems very straightforward. And yes. It does remind me that we should be doing uh, some regular uh, putting out the word about pump outs, um, which we mm. don't maybe do often enough. But. Okay. And okay, I, next time we put out a message, maybe we'll add that. Yeah. No, so I, I, I know of at least, based on next door, of at least two groups of residents who collaborate around pump outs. And so I don't know if it is appropriate for us to promote those collaborations and encourage people to participate in them or? Mm -hmm. Well, it's one option. Yeah. I know, um, yeah, is it, um, Mike Vinsky has coordinated yeah. an effort in the past and my, my neighborhood, likewise, just yeah. with our six households. We, when we do it, we usually do it all together. It's not, the timing on a reminder is not great right now. Um, it's right. not impossible to get pumped out in the winter time, but when the ground is frozen, it's just not ideal. So maybe reminder as the spring gets under. Right. If it, if it has to be dug up, but if you have one of those risers, it oh, can right. be done That's anytime. True. Yes. That's what That's I have. True. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, and, then, and I think right. maybe just a notification to people that they, they can be parts of groups. Not everyone might think about that. Uh, or might not want to, but yeah. Right, right, mm -hmm. true, but that it is a possibility. And mm -hmm. Right, and they get a discount. You get a discount for yeah. doing it that way, right? Definitely. And, you know, so typically, so I participate in the one uh, Mike Binsky or organizes, and typically that's every two years. I, I assume, is that what you do, Arlene? Mm -hmm. You know, so. We might have fallen off this year, yeah. yeah so who, who else is organizing one? Uh, we have one over here on South Laurel, um, uh -huh. Kat, mm. uh, and we we work with uh, Henrietta Cocut, and she used to work at Greg's. Oh, that's right, she did. Yeah, and you've got all those little bitty tanks over there, too. We have all the, yes, yeah, so we do yeah. ours once a year. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Good thinking. Good idea. Yeah, there's so many really small tanks on that side of the lake. Okay, so I think that is all we have to be to deal with, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we should just we'll just tell Penny that we're happy with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. no problem. We, there's not anything you'd want to change or add or subtract. Okay, all right, I'll tell her that um, we're good to go on that. Now. Arlene, you said you had some concerns about the town hall. Yeah, I spoke COVID with Becky. Policy. I spoke with Becky today about this, and um, just to clarify, because the the backstory is that I spoke earlier uh, this week with an individual who has tested positive for COVID, um, but. Uh, there was this terrible delay between the date of her test and the import of that test result into Maven. It took DPH, it, maybe it was the fault of the uh, healthcare provider's office and how prompt they were about reporting it to DPH, but either on their part or on DPH's part, it took seven days from the date of the test for it to show up in Maven. And the patient had been symptomatic for several days before that. So by the time I reached the person, they'd already completed their isolation. So it was a moot point, mm -hmm. but they brought up with me the fact that as an employee who works in town hall, she was being made to present a negative test result before going back to work. And that is uh, not what DPH recommends because a significant number of people will have a persistent positive test beyond the um, infectious period. And so DPH does not recommend a test-based strategy for exiting isolation, but rather a time and symptom-based strategy. Um, and 
So I talked with Becky about it and the confusion was the town's policy is uh, for their employees that if you are feeling ill, that you should be evaluated. You need to go get a test and submit a negative test before you return to work. And that's sound. That's what we expect of children at the elementary school or their families to, um, to do. But what was not clear and what was confusing to this patient was once you've tested positive for COVID, you fall into a different protocol. Um, if you test positive, then you need to complete isolation per the guidance of public health officials. And so um, Becky is gonna work to clarify the language so that it is um, more obvious that the negative test requirement really just applies to people who maybe had a cold or something and it turned out not to be COVID. Um, but that should there be a positive COVID test, then a different protocol is followed. And uh, okay. she thought that it, she'll run it by select board. She, um, just so that they are okay with the changes she's making before it goes out to everyone, or to all the town employees. Um, if, if they want me to attend their meeting so that I can explain the difference, then I will do that. So thank you. That's all there is to that. Okay. okay. Uh, I, I have one other point that I thought we asked last time that the, um, the test results not be reported to the Board of Health. And I didn't think that changed in the policy. Yes, I, I agree with that. Right. I'm not quite following you there. Um, well, the, the policy says that the test results are supposed to be reported to the Board of Health, and we have oh, recommended that they be reported to the employer. Okay. Is that still in the... Yes. In, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, and the document you circulated uh, okay. as I recall, in the previous discussion, we said that we felt it was more uh, a matter of uh, employment than uh, yeah. reporting to the board. Uh -huh. I must have missed this meeting. I don't remember going over this. I must have been absent from that meeting. But anyway. <laughs> okay. And then the only so, other thing that I wondered is um, if we want for policy to reflect any current recommendations about booster doses. About what, Garrett? About, about booster doses. Oh, okay. So uh, the policy now says something like we recommend to get vaccinated. Vaccinated. And should we add booster doses to that? And that seems to be the, the current thinking, if I understand it. I, I would be in favor of that, but I'm sort of waiting for Arlene to weigh in. Um, I'm sorry. I, I was reading the, what was the most recent question? I was reading this. Yeah, so, so, so basically number one just says, the select board strongly encourages all employees to get vaccinated. And, are, are, and I'm, I'm sorry, are you on the, the first of the two documents that's being circulated or the second? So, so the most recent email that um, Kat circulated yeah. to the board um, has an attachment where number one dated September 14, 2021, right. says the select board strongly encourages all employees to get vaccinated. And mm -hmm. I guess that, you know, it, based on current recommendations, mm -hmm. I would like to see people fully vaccinated and even more current recommendations uh, to receive a booster dose. Sure. But just to clarify, I'm looking at an email that has two attachments, one dated September 14th and one dated December 1st. 
Well, let me make sure oh. I did hang here. And that is an email that came to, oh, maybe it just came to me. Hold on. No. It is just to me, sorry. Oh. So Becky has, I can uh, forward this to each of you if you would like. Does that that would be sense? good. So she's updated it no, and sent it to you? But there's confusing language on, yeah. the, on the updated one that I'll have to get back to her about. So let me- I'll tell, just, I'll tell you what, let me, yeah. let, let me make a proposal okay. that you take charge of working with Becky and making that, meet the recommendations that we've all expressed here. I mean, you know what the sense of meeting is here. If you yes. would just take charge of that, we, I don't think we need to do it. Okay, sure, altogether. that sounds fine to me. So I will ask her to clarify, not just vaccination, but staying current with all recommended boosters as well. Yes, like that. Okay. And I will address the other things that I see in this as being uh, confusing language. Correct. Right, and also the the piece that we don't want the results necessarily reported to us. Okay, great. Report them to the uh, employer. <clears throat> and their vaccination uh, record also. We don't want their vaccination record. No, that's in there. Right. Something. Right. Uh, in, the right, original, in the original one, it says, give it to the Board of Health. In her, no, December, no, no. In her December first um, rewrite, she asks it to go to the town administrator. So, perfect. Ideal. So, um, Ar Arlene, would you? I support Arlene uh, taking that lead. Okay. Uh, I agree. Okay. okay. Um, Arlene, would you want to have um, a separate email account for doing the the work that you do with contact tracing and and follow ups and all that stuff? Would that be would that be helpful for you if we if we could get you that from the web committee? Um, it it might. Um, I mean, I would use it the same as I use our current one, but it might uh -huh. um, declutter the inbox a little bit. I'm not doing a ton of that stuff right now, but if we surge again, it gets, you know, can be more of a- Hope not. A, a presence in the- Yeah, it's, that's not a problem for me. Garrett suggested it saying mm -hmm. that it just was a kind of a cleaner thing. I'm, I'm careful to, to not open those. And if I do open them, I quickly, by accident, I quickly close them to-, I don't to... Think there's, I'm not worried about that. I, but yeah. um, I, uh, would it still say that it was coming from Board of Health or would it say that it's coming from me? Um, you know how that would what, appear? I, well, that's, that's kind of partly what I wanted to ask you. How would you like it to appear? I think that they could, we could have a shootsbury.org if there is one available because there's a limited number, but if they have a shootsbury.org email address available, yeah. then you could name it the way that you wanted it could be something i don't like know if there is shootsbury public health or something um yeah public health at shootsbury.org could be good that could be that could yeah. be good mm -hmm. all right and i then, will i will ask them if that's a possible thing yeah okay i think that would be great yeah and my, my argument is that in light of the complaint and in light of the pandemic, that it really would just be cleaner to have there be two separate email accounts, one for the Board of Health and one for uh, disease investigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll see. I'll see what I can do about that. Perfect. Sounds great. I hadn't even thought that was a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not positive, but we'll see. Okay. I, at one point, I wanted for everybody to have a shootsbury.org account on the board, but um, mm -hmm. that, that wasn't possible because there weren't enough available mm -hmm. slots. Um, just for the record, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll, I'll talk about this next time, um, about the fact that 
I had thought that everybody had access to the Board of Health email account, but when I then polled everybody else besides you, Arlene, and said, so what password do you have? <laughs> everybody said, um, well, I actually, I can't find it. I don't have it. I never got it, whatever. So apparently it's just you and me anyway. Um, but I, I think we'll talk about that next week as sort of part of, part of the record. So. So you guys have seen, presumably, the final determination on the open meeting law complaint. And um, we have been found guilty of one violation of the open meeting law. Um, uh, and that was Al Werner's sending an email after that board meeting along about April 22nd. That's the only thing that violated the only incident that violated the open meeting law. Um, and it's worth making a couple of observations about that, I think. Um, one is that nobody on the board now has done anything against the open meeting law. And the other one is it only takes one person to implicate the whole board, right? I mean, so the board was found to have violated the open meeting law even though it was just one person who did it basically against the better judgment if he'd asked for it of the rest of the board because I mean, we all knew that was a huge mistake he was making um maybe not for reasons of the open meeting law which i don't think i, I certainly i didn't understand it that well um so so in order to take corrective action on this, what we have to do is make public the contents of that email, which is which has the status of a meeting. Um, and we've been given a, number, a couple of choices of how to do it. I think that the best way to do it is to um, is to bring it up. Well, I guess we have two possibilities. If I understand it right, we can. Um, we can put it on the agenda for next meeting, December 15th, and then we can just read it. It's short, it's maybe five lines, um, and then include it in the minutes, and then it will be part of the public record, and we will no longer have a secret meeting. Um, the, other, the other thing we could do, if I read this correctly, is, um, is we could post the the contents of that email on our website. And I'm not crazy about doing that because it seems to me there's a sort of privacy thing here. Um, by, the, by the way, another thing that, I, that I'm sorry to I'm not speaking linearly here. Another thing that I wanted to point out was if I read this letter correctly, the reason that email is considered a violation of the open meeting law is because it referred specifically to an area that is within the jurisdiction of the Board of Health, and that is well water. So Al said in the, in the email something like, I don't agree with your assessment of the well water situation in Shrewsbury. And I think that is the part. If he had just said, I don't like it that you're being so mean to the Board of Health when we're all working so hard, I, I think that might not have been a violation. Um, but in any case, it's kind of a personal vendetta that we're seeing there in that email. And I have no wish to, I mean, obviously it'll be in the public record and anybody who wants to see it can see it. Um, but uh, it seems inappropriate to put it up on our website, you know, for people to look at and say, boy, these two guys are going at each other tooth and nail. So any, oh. any thoughts on this? So I would move that the board publicly read the email labeled exhibit 11 at our next meeting okay and can we add to that motion and enter it into the record 
Uh, so, so I'm just, I'm just rereading. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not done. Yeah. So we also order the board to publicly release the email labeled Exhibit 11. So, so I, my understanding of what is said here is that if we publicly read it and have it as part of our minutes. Right, we'd have to put it verbatim in the minutes, I believe. That we are um, in compliance with what we've been ordered to do. So, so I would move that at our next meeting. And, and so as part of that, it would be posted as an agenda item for the meeting that we read the email that is labeled exhibit, exhibit 11 in the complaint and that that exhibit become part of our minutes. Uh, I would second that. And you just took care of a question I had about it, um, Garrett. And that question was, do we need to in fact post it? And it seems to me we probably should post that we're gonna be doing this or in I some way actually, notify. I actually asked Sarah Monahan, the, the writer of the, of the letter, if we could just do that tonight and be done with it, or if we had to do it at a, you know, posted at a, you know, um, Pro, you know, posted in time and within, you know, in more than 48 hours. And she recommended that we, that we do it next time and, mm -hmm. uh, and okay. get it properly, properly noticed mm -hmm. on the agenda. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Because yeah, I mean, like everybody else, I want to be done with it, but, um, but so, oh, okay. So we have a motion and a second, everybody in favor of this. And just yes. one point of clarification. So, yes. so for the purpose of the board, exhibit 11, does not show up until the 61621 addition additional complaint uh, by the complainants. So that was the additional complaint that came much later and that we only recently learned about at our last. Sure. So so you won't find exhibit 11 in the original complaint. Right, I did. I did find it. Yep. Uh, because when she, she when she mentioned in the letter uh, Exhibit Eleven, I didn't know which one it was, but I, I was able to find it. Thank you. So I, I had to dig for that one. So yeah. yeah. Okay. I I wish I kind of wish that we could just quote the single sentence. That is a violation of the open meeting law, but I don't think that that's appropriate. I think we have to put the whole thing out. Right, where he demands an apology and gets all kind of all so, things get excitable. And, and so I, I guess I would also note that exhibit 11 is inclusive of the complainant's original email. So, yeah, I'm, so. I'm reading on. Uh, in that um, June 16th document that Exhibit 11 is an April 22nd, 2021 email. Yeah, that's what I thought. From right. BOH member Al Werner. And when we read that and when we quote that in the minutes, it has to be inclusive of the complainant's original email. Because ex exhibit 11 is that whole page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it's not just what Al wrote, it's what Michael wrote. That's my interpretation of the order. Okay. that what Michael wrote that provoked Al's response. That is the... the subject of this. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so um, we have a motion and a second. Everybody, everybody, good with this as as proposed? Yes. I yes. am. Arlene, Noreen, yes. obviously mm -hmm. Garrett is. Okay, let it be so. We'll we'll do that next meeting. Okay. Good. Do we have anything else we should be talking about? Arlene, I gathered from um, from emails on the Board of Health that there are cases currently. Yes, so there is a case in a Shutesbury resident um, and that person will be isolating through December 5th. Um, there are others in the household. There's a, a former Shutesbury resident who now officially legally lives in Orange, but is in the household and is positive and intends to, from what I understand, isol complete isolation here in town. So I have been in touch with public health from Orange so that we can collaborate on that. Okay. And then there's another household member who's got suggestive symptoms, but so far is not positive, but is going to be retested. So as it might be three people in that household. Um, and are there the others in the house? Out of okay. Um, there is another person who, but who is, has not been exposed. So, okay. Um, and they're going to try to keep it that way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting um, is, yeah. is that the person who is positive was also positive in September. And huh. ordinarily, we don't consider another positive within a 90 day window to represent a new case, a new infection. But that's only true if they remain asymptomatic. And this person who's now tested positive is very symptomatic. So huh. we can't assume that. So it's just, it's my first experience of a person becoming reinfected. Um, but anyway, I have conveyed that information to Walter Tibbetts, which is my usual protocol, just to give him the address um, so that uh, first responders in town are aware that uh -huh. there's an infection in that, in that household. And we'll okay. hope that's the end of it. <laughs> Yeah, That's I it. hope so. Yeah. No, there's no connection here with the school. Not with the elementary school. No oh, good. Yeah. Anything else that we should talk about? So, um, so uh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Well, so b before we conclude, I, I just want to kind of return to our next meeting and bringing a closure to the OML complaint. Okay. And what our process is going to be for uh, reading this uh, particular exhibit. How, how we want to approach that. Um, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, so are, are we going to assign responsibility for uh, reading the complaints? Um, at, at, I just want to understand how we're going to do this so that we're prepared. Um, do you think that we don't need to read the complaint itself, right? All we have to do is read the material that constitutes a violation of the open meeting law that we're basically found to be un- Illegal, basically illegal meetings, which is just that one email, right? We don't have to read the entire multi-page opus of the complaint. That does not seem to be what it is. We just have to make public what was not made public. Yep. So- so um, We publicly release the email. So, so we right. will, in that meeting, say that we're going to publicly release the email as part of the minutes. Right, and we will read it into the 
into, I'll, we'll read it aloud um, so that it will be part also of the recording and it will be added into the minutes and that we will, we will uh, identify this as the corrective action that we have been required to take by okay. the attorney general's office. All right. Okay. I just wanted to understand the process. I think, yeah, I think that that is all we need to, we need to do. And uh, if anybody wants to see the whole sordid mess, we have all the documentation and it's a matter of public record. So if people see that and they want to know what it's about, we can, we can let them have it. Okay, anything else? I um, apologize. Oh. I'm, I am very bad. Yes, you are. We've been talking about you for the entire 40 minutes. That whim, he is really bad. Uh, I, I, I totally spaced it out. I have oh no God. excuse. Been there, done that. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. All right. Well, we're, we're, just, we're just about to finish up. We assigned we, you to all sorts of things. Okay, yeah, right. good. that's my punishment. Yep. And yep. I just want to update you, Kat, although it may not be relevant because it's off season, but uh, Donna West has stepped down as president of the Lake Wayola Association and uh -huh. the new president is George Abdow. I have his contact information and I can, uh, I can email it to you. Okay, yeah, don't do it yet because I'll just lose it, but uh, okay. presumably we'll have to be in touch with him sometime in the future. They right. have they have a real problem holding on to officers, don't they? Uh, well, this this unfortunately is a um, is a health issue. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. Yes. For Donna or for Gary? For for Donna. Mm, bummer. Um, since we have Wim here, I'll just I'll just bring him up to date. I, I don't know, Wim. Maybe you didn't get a chance to read the letter from the um, Attorney General's office. Um, it was found that there was one instance of violation of the open meeting law, and that was Al's sending um, an email in which he referred to stuff that is within the Board of Health. Board of Health's jurisdiction and said something like, I disagree with you about the um, the condition of the well water in town and about the Board of Health's role. And as corrective action, we have been ordered to, that has been found to be technically a meeting. And because it was expressed to all of us, not you, because you weren't a part of the board then. Um, uh, and as corrective action, we have been required to make that email public so that yep. we, don't, we no longer have a secret meeting. And so we're going to read it and put it in the minutes at our next meeting after we've Got gotten, it. It, gotten it thoroughly, you know, um, yep. uh, noticed in the agenda. Unfortunately, everything we get from the, uh, the attorney general's office comes in on the Tuesday before meeting. Okay. It, it's likely no. I, I think it's also important to note that the board did not engage in developing a secret map. Right. For the public record. Right. Um, As it, determined by the attorney general's office. I wonder I wonder if we should post this, the Attorney General's office letter on our website. I think that would be better than addressing other points ourselves. And if it's only making public that one violation, um, I think it would be certainly mitigated in the minds of any reader if the entire Attorney General's letter were were visible, yeah. 
And it certainly is easier reading than all the pages and pages yeah. and letters and counter letters and emails yeah. and whatnots that we have that are really hard to wade through. Yeah, you don't, no one wants to see that. They, if they wanted that, they'd go on the Shootsbury website. <laughs> <laughs> so, but let's do that after, after we, after next meeting. We'll do it all at once. Does that seem reasonable or should I put it, should I put it up immediately? Let, let's take the course of action that uh, was ordered first. And then... Okay. I agree. Okay. All right. And then, okay, so we'll revisit this next time and decide what we, what would be appropriate for, for, um, putting on the website. Okay. Is there anything else? Not for me. Arlene, that's a fancy house. No, I'm in a, I'm at my daughter's apartment complex in Tampa. And this is the business center in that building. So, God. Uh, yeah. Thanks. It looks like you're in the, a, like an abandoned airport or something oh, like that. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. She, she, when I told her I would come down here for my meeting, she said, oh, sometimes it's full of, there's a lot of um, University of Tampa students around here. And she said, sometimes it's full of students, but in fact, nobody's here. So, it's good. Yeah, you're kind of echoing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. When are you coming home? Tomorrow. Oh. Um, fly home tomorrow, and then we actually come back here for Christmas and the New Year because Susan doesn't get much time off. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Well, well that'll be nice. Yeah. Get some warm weather. How much mm -hmm. longer does she have, Arlene? Is this her last year? Yes. She finishes yeah. the fellowship in June. And then she has to take her boards and defend her thesis in July. And she just said yes to a um, private practice she's going to join in Denver. Oh, Denver. wow. Yeah, so, wow. so she will start early October. So she will have August and September to do a little traveling and move. Good. And uh, then she'll be in Denver. Cool. Oh. Yeah. I feel like, yay, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you'd rather have her in a private practice in Massachusetts, I suppose. I suppose, but you know, it's she's been in Florida for several years now, and about the same effort to go visit. It's true. You know, three-hour plane ride, no matter how you slice it. So. Right. <laughs> well, I, I'm happy to go skiing with you out there, Arlene. Okay. <laughs> the, the practice is just south of Denver. It's in the Lone Tree. Lone Tree. All right. But yeah, if if my if I get a new knee, I'll go skiing with you. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll, go, I'll go I'll go Nordic skiing with you almost any time. All right. I might need a new knee by then too. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. Maybe we could get three for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> like the septic system pumping. <laughs> oh, you missed that. <laughs> you missed that, that part of the conversation. <laughs> it's like get a bulk discount, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. I have the perfect doctor up at Dartmouth. His name is Machete. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> get that referral. <laughs> no kidding that is his name yikes yikes he's right <laughs> all right on that note i move we adjourn all right all right uh, okay around town okay thanks you guys yes good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.